Okay, welcome to today's video where we're going to be repairing this 14-inch Apple Color Plus monitor. It has a couple of leaky capacitors, as you can see here. I've already removed them from the board. Uh, I didn't want to do a full intro before I started to do the repair because I'm not a CRT monitor expert. I wanted to make sure that this was actually the problem <laughs> before I said, hey, we're going to fix it and take these capacitors off and that's going to take care of the problem. However, that was all what was wrong with it, other than uh, this capacitor had leaked all over a couple of the resistors, got them rusty, we had to take them off and replace them too. Uh, you'll see that in the video here in just a moment. So yeah, I, I, I had two of these monitors, which was made doing this repair a whole lot easier, because I had the other one to go, the, the other one was a working monitor, so I was able to go back and forth between them uh, and, and verify some stuff, especially one of the resistors in here, it was a 47k ohm resistor, and on this one, completely covered in rust, cleaning it off with deoxit and, and isopropyl alcohol and stuff, I still couldn't read the color bands on it. And then the other monitor, the yellow band on it was just too light to see against the tan color. I couldn't, couldn't figure out uh, what it was based on the color bands. I actually had to uh, take the uh, multimeter and check it on that one and on this one. They, they both read 47k ohm. So this one was actually a good resistor because it still was reading correctly. But uh, it, as soon as I desoldered it, it cracked and fell off. It was a good thing we replaced it because it would have given us troubles down the road. Um, so let's uh, let's get into the repair now. You, we're going to switch over. It's just going to go straight into desoldering the capacitors uh, and, and go from there. So let's, uh, let's get into this repair and take a look at it. All right, so this video is going to be a little bit different format. Uh, I'm just going to voice over it because a lot of it's just fast forwarded. Um, so you might be wondering why I didn't record disassembly of the monitor, but there's a lot of safety involved in uh, disassembling one of these CRT monitors, uh, properly discharging everything and, and grounding it. And, and I'm not an expert on one of these monitors, so I don't want to give any uh, misinformation here on how to properly uh, disassemble one of these and give someone a false idea of safety and then somebody get injured. Um, not like I'm worried about getting sued or anything, I just don't want to injure somebody. So I, I totally skipped disassembly and taking it out. Uh, I do show a little bit of reassembly uh, in the end of the video, but not not so much. It, hopefully that doesn't really bother anybody that I didn't show disassembling this, but that's just not the point of this repair. This isn't a tear down repair and reassembly of, of this monitor it's just a hey look i had these leaky capacitors i took them out and i put new capacitors in okay at this point i've taken those two capacitors off and uh cleaned up the the circuit board so what i was doing there scrubbing off any of that electrolyte that got uh left over from from the leaky capacitors because uh, that'll just cause more rusting now i'm taking off this resistor i really didn't mention it in the intro or outro of the video uh, but yeah, I, re I replaced a total of three resistors. Uh, the the first two, I th it's been a couple of weeks now. I don't remember the exact, um, remember what their ratings were. Uh, so I, I, I wish I could, but I, I just don't remember the ratings. I, I believe one of them was a 1K uh, resistor and the other was 180 ohms. And, and then the one I replaced today was uh, f uh, 47K. So yeah, I had to replace all three of those resistors there, um, and so now I'm putting on the the new capacitors here. The, this is uh, the the Rubicon capacitors that I used to to replace the the old leaky ones. I figured I might as well go with a a, a brand I trust to not leak again. Uh, although uh, if you're really gonna go with expensive capacitors or or just high end capacitors, you, you probably should recap the entire thing. Uh, I was surprised throughout this repair because I, I did pull off a bunch of other ones uh, that looked suspicious and tested them, and they were still super low ESR, below uh, two two ohms on all of them. Uh, so most of the capacitors were actually still good in this. Now you can see here I actually put the um, uh, cable. I, I put that little bracket that's for that cable on the wrong side of the PCB. It actually goes underneath it. In the final, uh, when I put it all the way back together, uh, it, I did get it on the correct side of it, though. Uh, so, and, and yeah, I'm just not going to show the full reassembly of this thing. Again, for the same reason, it builds up a lot of capacitance inside that monitor, and it, it can be pretty dangerous. So I didn't show putting that back on. 
Okay, well, as you can see, it uh, we've successfully repaired the screen. Uh, I was going to try to do like an initial boot up kind of thing and be like, oh, look at it work. Um, but as you can see, I had to pull the other monitor out because it wasn't coming on at first. And I then took apart the monitor, double checked that I connected everything and everything was right. Put it back together. Uh, still wasn't getting any video out of it. So I took it back apart. Uh, and I took that rusty resistor out and just replaced it. It was uh, 47 kilo ohms uh, for that resistor. Uh, put it back together, tested it again, still no footage, uh, took it apart, and double checked that all the components uh, were good. I just went through. I, I checked all of the uh, electrolyte capacitors, made sure there was no dead shorts across them, uh, and, and went through like that on it. Uh, never found anything else questionable put it back together still had no footage so i plugged the other monitor in and i wasn't getting video out of the computer um was the issue because the, the other monitor the one next to it is the known good monitor so uh it was actually the computer started giving me problems after i did the repair so yeah, uh, the computer ended up being my second problem. The, the first problem was that monitor was just not working. There's a leaky capacitors, uh, had, had rusted out a couple of the resistors and, and it wasn't getting, uh, uh, any, it, it wasn't powering up and giving any footage. And then uh, I, I don't think that the, the 47K ohm resistor was actually giving it problems because I could check it with the multimeter or 47K ohms. I took apart the other monitor and verified that it is 47K ohms because I could not, I, I, I literally could not see that yellow band on it uh, to, to read that because that, I, I could see the violet, the orange, uh, in the, the gold band. So I could only see three bands and everything else was a four band resistor. And so I was like, I know this is a four band resistor. Um, and sure enough, yeah, it was, it was 4.7 K ohms. Uh, and you just couldn't see the yellow band. So, uh, that, but yeah, I, I was able to verify it working in circuit. When I took it out of circuit, it cracked in half. Uh, so it needed to be replaced. It would have failed sooner or later, uh, with some heat cycles, but, um, yeah, the monitor's working now. Uh, it does, as you can see, it does uh, have, I, I don't know what you call that, but the curves going on and the, the it's not taking up the full amount of screen. So clearly it needs to be tuned. I just need to get one of those big, giant plastic screwdrivers you use for doing that so that way you don't get electrocuted while tuning it. Um, so I, I, I do need to get that so that way I can do the tuning. If anybody's familiar with how to do the tuning, comment down below because I've I've never actually uh, uh, tuned one of these uh, CRTs before. I've actually never worked on a CRT uh, before doing these the two right here. So I, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I'm really glad that it, it worked right. Uh, but yeah, it, that, that air on there was uh, about the modem not being hooked up. Uh, but it definitely, it, it works, and, and I'm super happy with the repair. Also, you notice it is not that purple color. It is not the other monitors that was the problem. I wasn't getting video out of the thing, and you, you probably can see the little paint scraper behind there uh, propping up the connector there. I believe the connector uh, has cracked solder joints underneath it. I need to take the uh, motherboard out of the computer and take a look at that and see if it's the connector or if it's that adapter. It's one of the two of them though, uh, but I, I believe it's the connector on the computer because the the other computer that I had that won't boot up, the, the hard drive's not registering on it, um, that one, it it will uh, that, that one, it just has a perfect image on it every time. So I, I think, I think it's just that connector on, uh, where it attaches to the motherboard needs to, to be reflowed. So I'll have to get that off and, and clean it up and see what's going on there. And we'll do a video on that. That, that should be, uh, just an, a nice little video to show how to fix a purple screen on here. Uh, I, it is pretty common for monitors to become the problem on that. Every every time I was posting somewhere like, hey, what do you think's causing the purple screen? They're like, it's your monitor. I was like, I know it's not the monitor. I tried it on another computer. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, 
I, I'm pretty proud of this though, because it's it's my my first time working on a on a CRT, and, and it worked out for us. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and um, I'll uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.